Hi, Jake Northy here, back with another Creative Minds video. Today we're gonna to talk about testing. Testing is a very divisive subject. A lot of people talk about things like 100% test coverage. We talk about unit testing, test-driven development. There's a lot of different opinions. So we're gonna share some of our opinions and, and some of the things that we found through many years of, of doing testing, writing software, and, and making sure it doesn't break. When I think of testing, the first thing that pops in my mind is actually a, a, a sign that I saw at a dentist when I was very, very young. And the sign said, what teeth do you need to floss? And the dentist's reply was, only the teeth you wanna keep. And I, I always thought that was hilarious. And I thought it was a good way to put it. And for us, it's kind of the same with testing. You know, it's like, what code should be tested? Well, only the code that you don't want to break. That's what it comes down to. The tests are there to make sure that your code continues working no matter what change you make to the system. The tests are there to enforce that. A lot of times people, when they talk about testing, the first thing that comes to mind is test-driven development. But the next thing that comes to mind is, is code coverage. And I do wanna talk a little bit about code coverage because code coverage, a lot of people talk about 100% code coverage, or we're gonna to try to maintain at least 80% code coverage. And for me, code coverage is, is a great metric to tell you that you haven't tested enough, but it tells you nothing beyond that. It doesn't tell you how well your tests are written. It doesn't tell you how, um, how good your, your coverage is in terms of behavior. All it tells you is you're executing lines of code. You could execute lines of code, run through your whole program, and errors are happening. And if you're not checking that the errors are th not there, your code could be broken. You could have 100% cut coverage, right? And, and I actually see situations like this. That's why, for me, over time, code coverage is a metric that you can use to guide yourselves into saying what is not covered, but when it comes down to you know, what your actual coverage is, you need to actually look at the behaviors. So what does that mean? Well, when we're developing, we're, we're adding individual behaviors to the system. I wanna be able to add a new user or add a new piece of content. This new behavior added to the system needs testing around it. And so when I talk about adding a new user, when I write a test, what I wanna do is test everything that changes because I've added a new user. Right? I add a new user, well, when I get a list of users, now that user should be included in that. So when, when we're writing tests, what we're trying to do is we're trying to write a test that changes the system, it does it execute some behavior, but then we need to verify everything that happens um, after that. So we, we set up the state ahead of time, we do some behavior, and then the state changes. We need to verify that full state, right? So when you're writing tests, and I see this so much with unit tests, a lot of people stop once they've executed behavior. Hey, the behavior is executed. I'm happy, I'm good to go. No, you need to check everything. Check every single piece of state that's changed. That's the actual testing part. The execution, that's great. If you're checking for errors, okay, maybe maybe you're happy that it's it's executed without an error, but to actually be sure that you're testing correctly, you need to check that the state is, is there at the end, right? Like we said before, you only need to test the things that you wanna keep working, right? When you make a change, there's a good chance you'll break something. And if you don't have tests, you won't know until somebody else executes it. The worst thing that can happen is your end users, your customers are the ones who are executing things in a way for the first time, right? Another thing that I've seen recently is a lot of systems have become super configurable. You know, for each tenant, for each client, you can configure software system in many, many different ways. And that's great. You, you've got a product that can maybe become custom to a lot of different people. But ultimately what happens is actually the configuration becomes the code. And so we have good unit tests maybe around each unit, but now we have an n times n problem, meaning we have a number of different configuration changes times a million different execution paths, and now it's actually becoming very, very hard to test the system because all these different ways of configuring the system, you know, you think of something factorial, that's what happens. You know, I can change this configuration this number of ways, I can change this configuration this number of ways, and the actual intersection of all these things creates an actual very, very difficult to test system. Um, that's why we prefer to, to keep the configuration down, create one streamlined experience for users in our product, it's much easier to test. When we look at testing at, at Creative Minds, what we're trying to do is we're trying to protect the software from breaking. So when we build our software, we're building the product, we're writing the features, but we're also writing the tests to make sure that we can make a change, we can deploy it to production and feel confident that what we've deployed has not broken because our tests are ensuring that nothing's broken. And this is all part of that continuous delivery pipeline. If we wanna be able to de deploy quickly, if I wanna implement a feature today and deploy it today or deploy it tomorrow, I need to make sure I have as much automation as possible to exercise that code so that the change that I make that could have some implications in, in code we had written before is caught before the user sees it. Because what happens if you don't have those automated tests, you accidentally break something or, or one of the developers actually breaks something and the person who tells you is the customer and you don't want that to happen. You wanna be able to catch that way before the customers can even see that. And, and nowadays we are blessed to have an amazing 
amount of resources at our fingertips. So testing, we can run millions of different tests in parallel and actually have that feedback cut down to only a few minutes. With modern CI tools, you, know, you can spin up many different agents running tests. You can break your test suite across multiple, um, multiple systems actually. You can have multiple, uh, multiple VMs spin up at, at the click of a button or, or step an automation step in your CI pipeline. So that now you, you, know, you can run an almost infinite amount of tests. I think early days of software, a lot of people ran into, oh, our test suite's too long. We need to thin it down and, and make it faster. Well, if, in, nowadays we don't have to worry about that because we can take that test suite and we can split it up uh, in, in different ways so that now if we want to get our feedback under five minutes, okay, well, maybe we need 20 different machines running different test suites to give us that feedback. So the resources we have now make testing even better, even easier. Um, it really comes down to the developers knowing actually how to write good tests. And those good tests are what ensure that we have great working software that continues to work and we can continuously add features to and deploy those to customers quickly with the confidence knowing that we haven't broken anything. That's it for today. A lot more to talk about in testing in future videos. I uh, hope you join us for those as well. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed the video today. For more tips and best practices in software development, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and like this video.